Um, what do we got going on over there, Jeremiah? Oh, yeah, baby. Fly it. That's a pretty cool coil shape. It's really surprisingly stable, too. I really want one of those. I mean, how much more stuff <laughs> can I probably spend? Make, make, make yourself a hoverboard. Hoverboard. They, they actually made one for a commercial. I think it was... Um, wasn't it Lexus that funded that? It was yeah, it, Lexus, uh, yeah. Lexus, yeah. Sure was. And they, they did it. I got this. I got the strings pretty tight. Otherwise, I think it's wildly unstable. Hell yeah. Now, is it on a certain frequency or is that just DC? Or yeah, really? it's modulated. You can actually see the ball. I guess it's, it was flashing a little too quickly, yeah. If I turn it just right, you'll you'll see it going back and forth between uh, constant current and constant voltage mode. Now, if you want, you can fund every project you want to do in the future by allowing that to be made in China. What so, kind of yeah. coil structure is that, and how does this how does this work? To why yeah. is it floating? I mean, is well, it? It's is not it my design. Okay, so first off, it's not my design. Is it magnetic repulsion off the table, or is it? You yeah, know, like... it's it's rep exactly it's repulsion off the table, so it's surface sensitive. It's a combination of a. Uh, very high voltage impulse discharge and a twisted magnetic field. What's the table made out of? The table is made of plywood. I spray painted it flat black. I used to use this table for DJing, but uh, it's, it makes a fantastic lab bench because, you know, I can, mm. if I screw it up, it's just plywood, so I can just spray paint it over, like take a Q-dip and, you know, clean it up, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, and it's non-conductive. It's actually, uh, I dry this wood out in uh, the heat of the sun for several days before I used it for this application and coated it just to make sure that it was going to be completely dry because even while I was DJing, I thought to myself, well, you know, it's probably going to absorb moisture over the years, and if I ever want to use it for high-voltage experiments, I'll probably want to make sure it's dry. And yeah, <laughs> anyways, yeah. yeah, so it's fairly dry. Uh, I can set terminals directly on the surface here and be just fine. Uh, have them arc about four. Have you six. tested the electrical impedance? What happens if this you put no, my impedance meter out? So you have an oscilloscope there on the right, and then yeah. this is your voltage uh, uh, attenuator. Voltage and current, right? So we were seeing yeah. a little pulse waveform. You'll see it. You'll see it chirping. I have it set to a uh, to a sweep right now, just to kind of get a multiple frequency range. But let's see if I can turn up the waveform intensity. There we go. So you can see the sweep. Yeah. Uh, you have a sign and. Square wave, actually. Square wave. Okay. Is this one where the rise time matters or no? Yeah, hell yeah, it matters. It matters a lot. It matters like the entirety of the uh, operation of the system. It matters. Yeah, so you got uh, probably another thing connected in there that, that helps with that, right? Yeah. David that is Wilcox is taking notes in the background right now. <laughs> I'm yeah. taking notes. Oh, How do you wind the coil? It's a wood tip. <laughs> How'd you wind that coil? So it looks like there's I like a it looks online, like E8 like, with a bunch of like series of pins. That designed this crazy coil, and um, a buddy of mine suggested that I build this coil specifically to learn part of the art so I would understand the geometric structure of how to create a parallel line inductor in this particular way. And uh, mm. so I took him up on the challenge and built this coil. I had to, you know, ask for help several times because it's like, it's a ridiculously complicated thing. I'm not going to rip it off the threads right now to... Uh, Parallel but line yeah, it's, inductor. it's a ridiculously complicated coil. It took me uh, four unwinds, finally got it on the fifth try. Uh, I had to do a full unwind the first time, which is why I call this my second coil. But it's still the same coil. It's, 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 it's the first coil I'd have actually gotten to work correctly where... What it does is it focuses all the magnetic fields from the outside inwards in steps, like staircases, uh, and focuses them in the center here so that I get a significant vortex coming out of the system. Which makes it quite a bit different than your standard electromagnet, which is probably what a lot of people are thinking it, it is. Yeah, completely different. I mean, a lot of different ways to wind electromagnets, and uh, just as some examples of them, you know, we have a solenoid electromagnet where the windings are basically around a cylinder and just 
trace up and down and up and down all the way until they reach the inside of the outside. This is what you'd find inside of a high voltage transformer classically. Um, then we have a toroidal transformer. This one has no core, so this is designed for a very fast impulse. I use this in um, some uh, experiments replicated from Bob Greenier, and I was using this on a xenon flash tube for that project Xeno. And anyways, we have lots of different coil varieties, but this particular one is different because it's not actually a coil. It's actually a series of straight line wires or line inductors and so if we take a look at, you know, the right-hand rule, we have wire basically just pointing straight. If we have current flowing through it in one direction, we're going to have a wrapping magnetic field. So basically you have a, you have a wire and you have a field that's rotating around it. So if you had any particle that, say, accelerated towards this wire or was just moving in any direction and you had a current flowing through this wire, then you would have a response to that particle as a result where if it was, say, negatively charged, it'd wrap around like this, or if it was positively charged, it'd wrap around like this. But if you try to, if it was just sitting here, it wouldn't move. But if you tried to move it this way, it wouldn't just go this way, it'd go this way. it try to do that twist. Because it wants to follow the current flow at the tangent, and that's a funny little interaction between the way electrons flow through a wire and the position of the, the protons in each of those nuclei when they're ionized like that and they're missing electrons or they're giving off free valence electrons and transmitting the current down the wire. They act strangely, and you sort of have this uh, mirror effect where it's almost as if you had your hand like this and you shined a flashlight through or between your fingers the direction that you move the flashlight would create a shadow on the wall that moved the opposite direction. And so that's basically the same kind of effect that we're seeing here. But you have, you have a direction of a, a torque, but if you have an ion that tries to move tangential to it, it experiences a force 90 degrees to both. And it's a funny little thing. <laughs> so if you, if, you, if you wrap that in a, like an orthocyclic manner with like a tickler on one end, you can control the direction at that point. It's yeah, and I mean, you could just reverse the wiring, too, if you wanted to. You could just flip the wires. It's not the ideal system. Uh, there, There's a much, much better coil design that will really focus what I'm trying to do with this thing and give me a significantly better coupling coefficient. Um, I don't even, I, I wouldn't call it gravity. Anyways, I don't know what the hell it is um, <laughs> or how safe it is to be around. But anyways, still working it out. There's a lot to do yet, and uh, this is just something brand new that's, uh, I've never, I've never tried to build a coil like this. I mean, it's an oddball thing. It was a major pain in the butt. And would I approach it that way in the future? I'm not sure. Probably not. <laughs> I probably do something quite a bit different. Maybe. Is that, is there, is there, is that, I'm assuming that's copper wire. Is that coated yeah, copper? Copper, copper magnet wire. I think looking at it, I'm just taking a, taking a guess here. I'm going to say that's probably 26. I pulled it off of a relay, so I have no idea what the actual gauge. I didn't bother to check it, but I think it's about 26 gauge. I will say one last thing. This is not mine, so I cannot answer questions on it. But if I can study it and learn how to basically utilize the same principle, then that, then that can be ours. So this I can't talk about, but I'm working on right now that's in conjunction with this, I will be able to talk about. 